If you go ahead and open up your Articles of Faith to Article number 14. Two ordinances, two church ordinances. We're going to be starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Last few weeks we did an overview of the two ordinances and then we also uh, talked about baptism, the importance of baptism and as it being part of a requirement uh, for membership in the local church. And the other ordinance, of course, is the Lord's Supper uh, and being a part of ongoing fellowship with the body of the Lord's church. Uh, and so, as often as we take of that cup and, and take of that bread, we do show the Lord's return as a body, as a whole body. And uh, that's why it's important that the local church take it together. Uh, in that passage, it also talks about how that we should tarry one for another. Uh, and so, it's important to uh, be together with the Lord's people taking the Lord's uh, Supper. And it's a picture of unity. It's a picture of the body uh, being together without schism and without uh, leaven amongst our midst. You know, there's a lot of times that in churches, they don't practice proper church discipline. They don't practice proper, uh, proper unity. They often harbor sore feelings among the membership. They often harbor uh, disagreements and, and they often harbor uh, different visions of where the church should go. Uh, they are not of one mind. They are not of one body. They are, they, oftentimes these are because they refuse to deal with their issues. Uh, and the Lord's Supper is meant as a corporate worship. Uh, it is also meant for, uh, for making sure that the body takes time to say, yes, we as a body need to be on the same page. We all need to be focusing on the Lord. We need to have the correct purposes in mind. And so we have the, 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 the blood and body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We focus on the New Testament. We're New Testament believers. We're not Old Testament believers. We're not Israel. We're not anything else but the body of Christ, the church. Uh, and our great commission is what we do. Uh, we go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them all things that Christ has commanded us. Uh, we're not trying to rebuild an Israel. We're not trying to rebuild a nation. We're not trying to do all those things. We're just trying to do the work of Christ. And so we all need to be on the same page on who we are as a church, as believers. Here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, he is helping the believers in Corinth to understand the importance of unity, uh, the importance of being together uh, in one mind in, in Christ. And so here in chapter 10, uh, our verses here would be uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16, but we'll look at pretty much the whole chapter. But uh, here our ordinances, uh, our article of faith says, We believe that the Christian baptism, single immersion of a believer in water, to show forth in a solemn and beautiful emblem our identification with the crucified, buried, and risen Savior, through whom we died to sin and rose to a new life. That baptism is to be performed under the authority of the local church, that it is the evidence of obedience to God's word and is a prerequisite to the privileges of church membership. We believe that the Lord's Supper is the commemoration of the death till he come, and should always be preceded by solemn self-examination. We believe that the Bible, biblical order of the ordinances is first baptism, then the Lord's Supper, and that participate in the and that they participate in the Lord's Supper should be immersed believers in a member of a New Testament church. And more specifically, I believe that they should be, a member, they should be taking the Lord's Supper at their own New Testament church. Uh, and so it's important for that because obviously if we are taking uh, the Lord's Supper at a, if we're visiting a church somewhere and they're having the Lord's Supper, uh, and then we partake in their Lord's Supper, uh, how can that be a true symbol of the Lord's Supper if we are saying, I'm taking the Lord's Supper with you, but I'm not submitted to your authority? Uh, how can they uh, judge your membership? How can they judge your heart? How can you be in one with unity with that local body if they don't know what you're harboring? You can't resolve your issues with that membership. You don't know who those members are. Uh, you don't know them bodily. You don't know them uh, on a soul level or a spirit level. Uh, we may have the same spirit because we're all the body of Christ, but how do you know that local church? Why would you be taking of their Lord's Supper? 
Uh, and so it's important to understand that, yes, you can receive symbolism and you can give examples to perhaps maybe a child who's not yet saved, uh, uh, the examples of the bread and the, and, and the cup and such. Uh, you can receive learning from those things by partaking in it, but how can you truly partake in the Lord's Supper if you are not doing it with your own local church? Uh, and so, so that is, that is considering partaking of people who are of close, they, there's different theologies of what type of Lord's Supper you would have. Oftentimes people have an open uh, communion, would say, hey, if you identify as Christ or if you identify as anything uh, and you want to take of the Lord's Supper, feel free. Uh, other people, they say, well, no, we don't want to have just anybody partaking of the Lord's Supper, uh, but we are okay with traveling people, visiting, uh, that are of like mind, and say, hey, you come on in and, and take of our Lord's Supper, uh, and you can partake in, in that. No, that's, that's not what we believe either, because we need to examine ourselves in relation to our local church, in relation to the body that we serve in. How can we do that with a visiting church? Uh, whether we're visiting someone or some visitor is here with us. They can't examine themselves among us. Uh, they have to do it among their own body. Uh, and so, and then also there's the third position which I take is one of closed communion. Uh, the body itself, examining one each other, uh, submitting one to another in the, in the Spirit of the Lord, that body examining itself to make sure that the leaven is not in their midst. Uh, to uh, resolve their issues that they have with one another, their ministry issues and such. Uh, the closed communion is what I practice, uh, what I believe in. Uh, and, and that is not to say that I judge any other churches uh, in that, in that pr level because they can determine what their Lord's Supper represents for them. But as for me, uh, and as leadership of the church, I believe that our Lord's Supper ought to be closed and a self-examination for this local body. Uh, and so that's important to understand that uh, a member of a New Testament church, they, the believer must be a member of their own local New Testament church uh, to partake in that, in that Lord's Supper. Uh, here in chapter 10, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would that ye should, should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. We understand that the nation of Israel is baptized unto Moses in the cloud of the sea. When they went through the Red Sea, they were baptized unto Moses. We are not baptized unto Moses. Therefore, we are not of the Old Testament uh, Passover for our supper. Uh, we are not baptized into the uh, nation of Israel. Therefore, we do not partake in the Old Testament Passover as the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper and the Passover, while they are taking place at the same time, are not the same thing because one is the, is, is the New Testament and one is the Old Testament. The baptism that we partake in is not circumcision, but rather it is the baptism of the New Testament. Because here they are baptized unto Moses, we are baptized unto Christ. And so it's important to understand the distinctions. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And of course, that's from Exodus chapter 17, uh, verse 6, and Psalm 78, verse 15. Uh, those passages that uh, Paul is referring to about how that they drank from uh, that spiritual rock, which was Christ. In uh, verse 5, it says, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And so we understand that in the New Testament churches that people uh, oftentimes take of the Lord's Supper, but they are not doing it with their heart. They are just doing it out of symbolism. They are just doing it out of self-will to be part, to keep up appearances, if you will. Uh, and that's they say oftentimes that Paul said that uh, many of them are sick because they partake unworthily. Uh, and so it's important to self-examine yourself, and if it's important. Not that if you have some issue that you're dealing with to refuse to partake in the Lord's Supper, but rather use the opportunity uh, to uh, rather instead of saying, no, I, I, I'm not worthy to take the Lord's Supper, to say, I need to prepare my heart to be worthy. Uh, and so the, the examining is not a, an opportunity to, uh, to forsake the Lord's Supper, but rather so that you can self-examine yourself, prepare your heart so that you are worthy to take the Lord's Supper. And so it's important to be worthy, but you partake uh, after you've resolved those issues. 
But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Why? Because they were complaining. They weren't on, on board with what God was doing, uh, and so forth. Now, these were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. When we were partaking of the Lord's Supper, we were focusing on the things that we are to uh, keep our mind on, rather than worldly lust. We were supposed to keep the mind on, on the body and the New Testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither be idolaters as were some of them, as it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. How often do churches today eat and drink and rise up to play? They eat, go to church not for the preaching, but for the, the food and the fellowship, which is not bad. It's not wrong to do those things. They go there for the activities. What programs do you have for my children? What things do you, uh, activities that you have for me to get involved in? Uh, they eat and drink and ra rise up to play. Uh, that is the, not the primary focus of the Lord's, uh, of the Lord's Supper. It's not the primary focus of church. Uh, while these activities supplement, it's good to have fellowship and it's good to, good to be with your, your fellow believers and good to have youth activities. These are not the primary functions of the church. The primary functions of the church is to teach and to preach and to uh, bring forth and explain to, those, to the people as a body what they ought to be doing. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Some people, not only do they, they go to church only for eating and drinking and playing, their bands, their playing, and all this stuff, they, they also go there uh, with the purpose of fornication. Their, their mind is not focused on Christ, but when they go to church, it's focused on some other thing. How can I get a business deal going? How can I sell my Amway? How can I uh, do all these things that are not church related uh, by making connections in the church? The, the fornication here is not necessarily just that one of the sexual pleasure of going out of your marital covenant, but rather Fornication here is more broadly, especially with the church, is focused on when you're supposed to be here with your heart and mind and soul focused on the Lord, you are focused on some other thing other than your Savior, other than your husband, uh, the, the Lord, the head, of the head of the church. You're focused on some other program other than the Lord's program, whether corporately as the church or whether individually. He says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. Notice there, again, this is especially important. Uh, they, the spiritual drink which, and that rock which was Christ in verse 4. He's talking about the Old Testament believers with Moses. Uh, and then verse 9, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. Notice, we tempt Christ, they also tempted Christ. So we need to understand that the Old Testament church they, they were following after Christ, but they committed fornication against Christ uh, and, and were destroyed of serpents, of serpents. You know, they're destroyed of the devil. How oftentimes, especially in the Garden of Eden, uh, they're doing what the Lord's called them to do, to be caretakers of the garden. And then a serpent comes along and bites them, if you will. Uh, the sin of death, uh, the sin. Uh, you see, we're not focused on the Lord and we're distracted. We will be destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed as the destroyer. So notice here, he's referring in this section, and as we get into verse 16 for the Lord's Supper, uh, he's referring to the importance of resolving these issues in the body. Idolatry, fornication, uh, even the distraction of eating and drinking and rising up to play. Neither let us, uh, and then he says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted. Neither murmur ye, even complaining, uh, distracted about uh, the focus on Christ, and you're so busy focused on the gossip of what's going on with sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so that you are distracted from your ministry to spreading gossip about your, your brother, your member in Christ, your sister in Christ. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed, of the destroyer. When you're focused on gossip and, and, and the, the faults of your brother and sister uh, without the intent of helping re them resolve their issues, uh, then you are a murmurer and then you will cause, you will cause the, the body to fall. 
Now all these things happened unto them for examples, that they are written for our admonition. We need to understand that while the Old Testament believer, we are not of the Old Testament, we are not of the, uh, of the Old Testament church or the Old Testament body, uh, we are, uh, they are our example uh, for our New Testament ordinances. And so it's important. Uh, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let th- him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Well, I'm a good Christian, I'm godly, there's nothing wrong in my heart. Uh, you need to take heed. You need to submit to the body of the Lord. Uh, you need to examine yourself, lest you fall. Uh, so we all, none of us are perfect, we all have something to work on. But the important thing is not that you eliminate all faults. The important thing is that you acknowledge where your focus needs to be. We understand that none of us are perfect. None of us, you know, we're, we're, sin, we're not sinless. Uh, we, we are disgruntled sometimes just because of our body or, you know, we forget to eat or something. We get, we get agitated or whatever. Uh, that's not what it's talking about here. It's talking about your focus. Where is your focus at? Is it about, is it about playing or fornication? Or, you may have distractions in your life, but are you focused on the Lord? Are you asking the Lord to help you with your faults and your problems? So, Partaking of the Lord's Supper is not about being worthy in the sense that we are, have perfected ourselves and eliminated all, all issues, but rather there's acknowledging and saying, I am unworthy to take this in my own ability, but yet in submission to Christ and focus on Christ, I acknowledge that I need to work on these issues. I acknowledge that I need to not be distracted as I often am. I acknowledge that I need to do those things. So it's about acknowledgement and it's about focusing on working on those things rather than complete elimination. Uh, it, you know, it, it, oftentimes we start looking at the Lord's Supper as an uh, opportunity to say, well, what about so-and-so? They, they, they're partaking, yet they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, finish that. No, the focus is on ourselves. Examine yourselves. Uh, so we've got to make sure that these examples that they were for us are not in our own lives and that we are focusing on the Lord, helping him, having Him help us with the issues that we're working on. Wherefore, let them that t- thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. Your problems are not common to yourself. We, we all have faults. We all have problems. None of us are perfect. We need to, to give people leeway and acknowledge that we're all working on something different. But yet we're focused on Christ, trying to be the body, whether so imperfectly. Uh, he says... He says, it's not common to man, but God is faithful. So, common to man, it's common for man to want to uh, eat and drink and fellowship and, and, uh, and play. You know, have activities and programs and such like that. There, there's nothing wrong with those things, but the focus has to be correct. He says, the temptations are common to man. These are common things that people have a tendency to be distracted, you know, in fornication, distracted uh, by idolatry, uh, focusing on things that are not Christ. These are common to man. He says, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted. Notice the temptation will always be there. So just because you have temptation or you have distraction in your life doesn't mean that you're unworthy to take of the Lord's Supper, but rather that He will be with you. And you acknowledge that He'll be with you and yet you need to work on these things. He says that to be tempted above that you are able, but that you will be the, t- but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So even though you have the distractions, you acknowledge, you submit to the Lord's Supper, so acknowledging that the body is there to help you move forward. And so that's the important part. Are you willing to move forward in, in, in working with your spiritual life with the body of the Lord? If you are, then you're, you partake of that Lord's Supper. But if you in your heart say, I don't, nobody can tell me what to do. No, but I'm not going to submit to nobody. I'm not going to submit to the Lord's church. I will take care of my problems my own way and in, in, in my own you know, timing. Well, you need to work on yourself, but that's rebellion. You're not submitting to the Lord's Supper. When you partake of the Lord's Supper with that heart then you are partaking unworthily. But if you're saying, Lord, I have these problems. I'm disgruntled against sister so-and-so. I, I, I'm, I, I'm jealous of so, brother so-and-so because of that opportunity he had or whatever. Uh, but Lord, help me to be more humble. Help me to be submitted to him in, in, in the spirit. Uh, I know so-and-so is not perfect. He's, not, he's working on these crazy issues that I've overcome, but I, but I don't want to be around him because of whatever reason. Help me to be able to find a way to 
protect my sanctification, but also help him in his. Uh, that's the heart that the, the Lord's Supper is working on fulfilling. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? So when we take the communion, it's about the blood of Christ. It's about salvation. Are you a believer in Christ? Are you, are you focused on his salvation? Have, have you focused on learning about salvation? Have you focused on the ministry of Christ? Uh, when you take of the Lord's Supper, are you, are your, is your focus on, uh, on trying to encourage one another to be believers in the Lord? Focus on his, uh, his blessing. When we bless each other, are we blessing uh, one another? Are we, or are we seeking to bless the lost with salvation? When we see somebody with faults, are we looking at their faults? Are we looking at their failings? Are we looking at their ethnicity, their physical descriptions or, or whatever? Or are we looking at, hey, that's somebody that God died for? The blood, when we take that cup together, we're saying we're partaking in the Lord's salvation together. We are of one body, one blood. Uh, and that believer who is from Nigeria or Africa, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, we are all of one blood, the blood of Christ. He says, I speak to wise men, the cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. If you are a brother in Christ, you need to be saved. You need to be, first thing is if you're not a believer in Christ, you should not be partaking of the Lord's Supper because you're not worthy. Uh, you need to be a believer. You need to be partaking of that blood. You need to be part of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So we have the salvation, and then we have the body. Uh, you know, you know, salvation and baptism is similar to these things as well. Uh, but uh, we are saying that I am a believer and I am in communion with the body. I am, I am in communion with Christ and I am in communion with his body. And so when you are partaking of the Lord's Supper, you are saying, Christ is my focus and submission to the body, the local church, is my focus. Uh, and so when I am doing the work of Christ, I am following Christ and what he tells me to do. But I am doing it in my local church, submitted to the local church, in what activities and programs that they have set up so that I'm not going rogue, doing my own thing, doing things my own way. I am submitted and I am part of the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ in my local area. Wherefore, my, he says, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So when you take the Lord's Supper, you're, communion with, you're in communication with Christ, and you're in communication with the body, the local church. For we being many are one bread. Notice that there, when you look at flour, if you think about this, when you, when you go baking, ladies uh, and, and men too, you know, when you make your treats for the ladies and such, you uh, that flour is not just, it, it is not one element, right? There's, there's thousands of little pieces of flour and everything, but when you bake it into one product, when you mash it together in one loaf, even before it's baked, you know, that flour turns into, instead of little flecks of everything that can just be scattered around, it is one lump. It is one body, and it grows together. It, 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 uh, it, and so we see here it says, for we being many, we're, there's many pieces of flour uh, scattered. You can't, you can't count how many pieces of flour when you scatter it around, uh, but when you lump it together, you know you have one lump, regardless of how much flour you have, and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. All the flour is not its own flour. It is one piece of bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? So you see, when in Leviticus, when it talks about all those five different uh, sacrifices that the, the Israel had, he says, you know, even though there's many different people in Israel, uh, they, they are partaking of those Levitical sacrifices, there is one altar. They are one nation. They are one body, the body of Israel. Well, say I, and then he says, that's after the flesh. Of course, we are after the spirit. What say I then that the idol is anything, or that which is offered to sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. The Gentiles, even in their altar, when they sacrifice to an altar, they're identifying with that God or that idol or anything like that. And so when we are partaking of the Lord's Supper, we're identifying with Christ and his body. 
uh, would I not that you should fellowship with devils? And notice here in verse 21, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. So choose, the, the communion is about choosing who you're going to focus on. Are you going to focus on business? Are you going to focus on life? As the primary thing? Are you going to focus on activities as the primary thing? Well, kids got to have soccer practice, so we're going to miss church on Wednesday or Sunday or, or whatever. You know, that football game is across town, so we're not going to be uh, at church that Sunday morning because we got to take the football team to activities. It's not wrong to have all these activities. It's not wrong to be partakers. It's even not wrong to, you know, in the when Paul says, whatever is in the shambles, eat without, without uh, asking where it came from. It's not wrong to, to eat the meat and such of the world, like having these activities. But what takes center focus in your life? Is it Christ? Is it the Lord? Uh, or is it work or a business? Or I got to make money? Uh, and he says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. And when you are a part of communion, you need to make this conscious decision. The Lord's church comes first. That is my focus. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the devil's uh, table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? When we d are distracted, we focus on our own life instead of the Lord's life as believers. We're provoking the Lord to jealousy. We're, we're not provoking, we're not in getting the blessings of the Lord, but rather we are causing uh, jealousy to occur. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. You as a believer in Christ, you are free to do whatever you want. But if you wish to take out the Lord's Supper, you need to submit to the body of Christ. Uh, you are free to go. And this kind of goes back to where uh, Ananias and Sapphira, if you think about it, uh, they were, when, Paul says, when the property was not your own, was it yours to do with whatever you wanted? But then you said, but then you lied to the Holy Ghost when you said, I sold all this property, I've given it all to you. When you are partaking in the Lord's church, when you're partaking in the Lord's supper, uh, you are saying to the Lord, I've given my whole life, I've, I've sold myself to you, I've given myself to you, you've bought me, and now I'm submitting to your body. Do it with me as you will. And then yet you only gave the Lord part of it. And you're claiming that you gave all of it. So when you're submitting to the Lord's body, when you're joining a local church, you need, to ex you need to acknowledge that you are giving yourself over to the disciple of the Lord, uh, to fellowship with the Lord. You were free, when Christ saved you, you were free to do whatever you wanted with your life. When you join the local church and you partake in our communion, you are not free to do whatever you have because you are claiming that you gave it to the body and blood of Christ. You, that you are submitting to his discipleship. That he, you are going to be his hands and feet. And so it's important to acknowledge what the Lord's Supper is. It's an important activity. It's not just some sort of symbol that you do. You are actively saying, I am submitted to the body of Christ. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? If you want to do your own thing... Don't, don't, be the body, don't be the hands and feet of the Lord. Go do your own thing. But don't say, and then, it, and then if you do say, I want to be in communion with the Lord's church, submit to it fully. Go full in. Don't just be one foot in, one foot out, and claim to be all the way in. It, the, the Lord doesn't want hypocrisy. He wants total focus. And that's what the Lord's uh, communion is meant to do. You know, in the Old Testament, when you didn't partake in the Lord's communion... Uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Passover, if you didn't take partake in the Lord's Passover, what the scriptures say is that they were to be cut off from Israel. You were free from Egypt. You were baptized through, through the, the Red Sea. But yet, you were also free if you decided, hey, I don't want to partake in the Passover. You were free to go join some other nation. You were free to go off in your own way. Uh, you were cut off from that body. But if you want to be part of Israel, you were partaking in the Lord's Passover. It, it, now, if you want to be part of the Lord's church, you partake in the Lord's communion. Uh, but if you want to be free, you go be free. Uh, and so it's important not to be half in or half out. You dedicate your life to focusing on the Lord and being the hands and feet of the Lord if you partake in the Lord's communion. And if you don't, you'll be like Ananias and Sapphira who, say, who claim, I sold this piece of property and I gave all to the Lord when you only wanted the accolades 
you wanted the reputation, you wanted the blessings that the church could give you without any of the responsibility, you give part of it so that you can also go buy your own treasures and, and things and focus on your life, but also sprinkle in a little bit of Christianity. That's not what the Lord wants. The Lord wants all of you. Be, be a living sacrifice, the Lord says. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. When you're seeking your own wealth, you're focused on yourself. You're not part of the church. You're focused, you're, you're on your own, you're, you're focused on yourself. But the communion, you cannot focus on another. This is why also that we don't, foc, we don't allow uh, membership in secret organizations as well. Uh, so a lot of times people would be part of the Masons or part of some other secret organization uh, that uh, in addition to being a membership in a Baptist church, uh, you ought not to be part of those secret organizations because you are making vows to that organization that you ought to be giving only to the Lord's church. So even if you part, join in the Masons, uh, then you are making vows. Uh, and now, obviously, you know, some people join lodges and, and such like that, you know, but they, and they do it for fun or whatever. Uh, the, that depends on what lodge or, or whatever, the, what they require of you. But... Essentially, the only membership you really need to be joining is the Lord's Church as part of making vows and such. Uh, now, there are other things like joining the military. You make vows to defend your nation and such. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about here. Ta I'm talking about focusing as the Lord. Uh, a lot of times when people say, I, I did this for God and country. Uh, God always comes first. The, the, and when we talk about defending the Constitution, uh, we make a vow before God. It's part of, part of our focus on God. But it says, let no man seek his own wealth, his, seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Don't worry about where physical things come from, but rather you focus on the spiritual, you focus on Christ. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And then go down to... Verse 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink whatsoever ye do, do all for the glory of God. So, yes, it's okay to eat and drink. It's okay to play occasionally, you know, play fiddles and play games and different things. Uh, but whatever you do, do for the glory of God. Do you do it to relax yourself so that you can go out and do the work of the Lord later? Uh, what are you doing uh, when we have activities and fellowships here at the church? They're for the glory of God. Uh, they're not just for our self-amusement. They're not just so that we can do networking for our own business purposes. It's not so that we can have our own side businesses as, as, uh, as, uh, as family members. But rather, when we eat and drink together, we do so for the glory of God. Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved." And so here, the, the joining together is, is so that we can glorify God and so that we can save others. It's the Great Commission. And so as we as a body, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, are we doing it to be in union with the Lord? Or are we doing it to, uh, to focus on our own selves? Worthiness is not about being perfect, per, not about perfection in our own sanctification, but rather worthy, worthiness to take of the Lord's Supper is being of one mind together with the body and in focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We commune with Christ and we commune with the body. And so we'll go ahead and end there. And next week we'll focus on 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing you get blessings you've given to us, Lord. Uh, the opportunity to come to church, Lord. And I just pray that you'll just continue to help us to uh, understand the importance of the Lord's Supper, uh, the importance of the ordinances uh, for, for membership and such, and for the uh, sanctification of the body and the unification, and to uh, avoid these false focuses of the church, Lord. I just pray that you'll just help us to be truly focused on you, uh, whatever we do for your glory and honor, for the salvation of others. Just and I pray. Amen.